Today, we're looking at a brown ink by KWZ, their Iron Gall Mandarin. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. And if you like videos like that, I would invite you to subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram, and there's timestamps down below, so that if you are in a hurry, you can skip around. But if you got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into this Visconti Van Gogh with a medium nib, use it to write for a day, and to take my notes for this video. In order to have some standardization in my writing samples, I always use Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. I do test other papers, but those will show up later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, so it came in a vial like this. And to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen. It does have some very light shading going on. The extra fine is a little bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, some very nice shading happening here with eight seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine. With no feather spread, halo sheen, still a very nice shading, 12 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both, well, the extra fine shows some color variation. The medium shows none, but it's very nice in the writing. Tomoy River. No bleeding, normal Tomoy River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer some decent shading. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, still very nice shading. Medium is by far the darkest tone on the page with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 20 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both shows no color variation, although we do get some nice shading in the extra fine. And Rhodia with no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, a very light amount of shading, but it's definitely there. The extra fine is just a little bit lighter than the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, a very nice representation for its shading here. It's really doing a very good job. Eight seconds to dry. Medium is by far the darkest tone on the page. With no feather spread, halo sheen, there is some very nice shading. Look at the Y in Lazy, the F in Fox. Look at how the word the has some shading from start to finish. It's there. It can be there. It's just not really standing out well. 14 seconds to dry. Scrubby of the Extra Fine shows more color variation than the medium, which is the way it worked in the writing. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And what we see is this kind of light brown push its way up and then we get this orange above it and we get this very light brown line across the top. Quite interesting. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And that light brown is gathering together in a line on the bottom, getting itself into the filter paper. It's still pushing up some, but then we get this nice darker orange that we see better than the first chromatography. And we can see that what was just the brown before is that sort of pale color that we've seen with some of the iron galls before. And here we see it again, and that's what created the darker line at the top. This one, I let dry for 24 hours before I dunk it into water. The line on the bottom is much darker, much more there. A lot less of that uh, light brown is pushing its way up. The orange is very pronounced. We can still see that kind of pale color that's really gathering at the top, right about in the center, where you see it a little darker. It's this odd pale tone that shows up in some of these iron galls. Now this one, I let dry for 72 hours. and Really, there's not a tremendous difference we're seeing from the 24 to 72 hour, but it still shows that very dark, uh, now much darker uh, brown at the bottom, the orange, that pale tone that still makes a little bit of a darker tone at the top. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page and how hard it may be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before I test it. Generally speaking, when I'm looking at this highlighter, I feel safe using it in a note-taking situation 
even with that weird thing that happened with the eye. I don't know what happened right there, but generally speaking, this looks pretty good and safe to keep my notes readable. Water is moving the orange in that pale tone, but it's leaving a lot of that gray tone behind. Now that's on paper. Pen flush is doing the exact same thing as water, nothing more, nothing less. Now for me cleaning my pens, the only thing that I actually had to use was water. The one-third bleach solution completely removes it from the paper, but you're not going to need that to clean it out of your pen. For the inks I tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. I'm also linking a video that shows how I do my testing and my calculations. KWZ's Iron Gall Mandarin has a viscosity of 2.92, making it just a little bit dry. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples. And for the inks I've tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. KWZ's Iron Gall Mandarin has an average dry time of 12 seconds, making it a fast dry ink. Instead of finding inks that look like KWZ's Iron Gall Mandarin, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. So I went with a nice neutral gray tone. I chose Diatramentus Silver Gray. The second writing sample is done on black and red Franklin Christoph and Limone paper. Here we're looking at black and red notebooks. Now we get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread halo sheen. It does offer some very nice shading for being a more absorbent paper. Extra Fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, still very nice shading here on absorbent paper, four seconds to dry. Medium is by far the darkest tone on the page with no feather spread, halo sheen, a few spots of some shading that you can see, like the O in over, the very beginning of the B in brown, the beginning of D in dog. It looks like once it really starts to flow through that pen, it's only the beginnings of letters or the very beginnings of words. Then it's just much darker and doesn't show shading. Seven seconds to dry. Now the scrubby of the extra fine does show some color variation left to right. The medium shows none and that's largely what we got in the writing. Franklin Christoph paper with no bleeding, no ghosting. Again, a more absorbent paper. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer a very light amount of shading. Now the extra fine is a little bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, very nice shading is going on here with this paper, six seconds to dry. Medium, by far the darkest tone on the page with no feather spread, halo sheen and no shade, eight seconds to dry. Scrubby of the extra fine left to right does show some color variation, medium shows none and that's how it worked in the writing. And last up is Limon paper. Now ignoring what happens with the scrubby because I'm putting it on ridiculously thick there. It gets no bleeding and no ghosting, which is nice because this paper has not done well with a bunch of inks. The 1.1 had no feather spread, halo sheen. It did offer spots of shading throughout. Not too bad. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It shows shading better than the stub did. Very nice peppering of it throughout with seven seconds to dry. Medium is much darker than the extra fine, by far the darkest tone on the page. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, nine seconds to dry. Scrubby of the extra fine, far left to far right, does show a little bit of color variation, nowhere near as much as the writing. The medium showed none and the medium writing had none and that is all that I have for writing samples. So what do I think of KWZ's Iron Gall Mandarin? While it writes as an orange, like the name would suggest, it very quickly becomes a brown on the page. I would have liked to have seen it hold on to a little bit of that orange, although the brown itself isn't bad and I do enjoy it. Very well behaved, very easy to clean from the pen. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? A very wet pen is going to make it much darker and a very dry pen much lighter. I definitely prefer this from a medium flow, medium to broad nib where the brown tone left behind is most pleasant. If you've enjoyed this video and made it this far, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down and tell me why. Thanks for watching.